Every Wednesday, Queer Kid Stuff brings out a new video and my erection gets a little bit stronger. Today, my peen is positively pulsating at the thought of whatever newfangled method of child abuse I might find in their video. So let's all grab a plate and cut ourselves off a slice. And there goes my erection. Hey there, it's okay welcome to, to Queer Kid gay. Stuff. I'm Lindsay and today we I'm talking to the grown-ups about chatting with your kids about sexuality. Oh, we've actually got to talk to our children? Well, fuck that. I thought that's what television was for. And if you're a boy, girl, or somewhere in between. Fuck your intro, woman. I'm sure you spent well over six minutes making it, but we just don't have the time. Today, I wanted to do a little debunking and talk about why some people might be nervous about talking to their kids about sexuality. Because they're kids, Lindsay. We go over this every fucking time. Do you even watch my videos? I'll also touch on the importance of these conversations to give you a slightly better idea of why I started this channel in the first place. Uh, unemployment? Boredom? Creeping sense of impending doom? Most of the script for this episode was actually taken from an article I wrote for the site My Kid is Gay, headed up by Kristen Russo. Normally, I would be surprised that you actually script these things, but I can see you reading it from time to time. If only what you were saying was memorable, eh? Who also runs the organization Everyone is Gay. Are they paying you a fucking commission or something? I've seen Alzheimer's patients drop less names. Where she gives advice to LGBT youth. You can check that out by clicking up there. <laughs> Not on this video, you can't. I warn you now, kind viewers, if I put a link up in a video, it will take you to Lemon Party. Anyway, let's get to talking. Where's the bear, Lindsay? You know I'm only here for that piece of shit. Where is he? The singular most controversial myth at the core of explaining sexuality to children is in confusing it with an explanation of sex. Uh, I would say sexuality does equal sex. Sexuality equals where you like to put it or where you like to have it put. It's even in the word. Sex. Ooh. Ality. I say sexuality. Could be a new theme song for you, Lindsay. Just think about it. You might have noticed that I've been dealing with a little bit of negativity here on the channel. Every shitlord who has ever covered queer kid stuff, stand up and take a fucking bow. This bit is for us. It's actually why I've had to turn off the comment section on most of my videos. And so you could ignore the popular opinion that you are doing more harm than good. I did a longer video about that on my personal channel, and you can check that out if you'd like. Yeah, I might do. Actually, as soon as I download Adblocker, I'll be all over it. Because you aren't getting any of my YouTube dollars, Treacle. Oh no, no more sweaters with wanky slogans for you. I'm constantly fighting this negative criticism and controversy. Well, I'm not sure how you've been fighting it. Disabling comments is closer to running away and hiding, really. And it means I can't let you know when I've made a response video, so I have to tweet it directly to- Ah. I'll give it to them. In some ways, my critics can be correct. <coughs> Fuck, I just chose the wrong time to take a sip of beer. Did she really just say that? Young children don't need to know about sex. She did. What the fuck is going on? Am I dying? While some parts of sexual education like consent, respect, reproduction, and body positivity can and should be taught to children, yeah, yeah, reproduction, body positivity, consent? We're teaching kids about rape now, are we? Because if you teach consent, you are also inadvertently raising the issue of non-consent. Might as well chuck molestation in there for good measure. We don't want any kids leaving that lesson with a well-adjusted viewpoint now, do we? Creepypescent kids don't require knowledge of sex. At least not in the way adults approach sex education. Guys, I'm freaking out. I'm not used to Lindsay making any kind of sense at all, and this is damaging my noggin. Children don't need to know all that. And it makes sense that parents don't want to talk to their three and six year old about sex yet. I never thought I'd say this, but you're damn right there, Lindsay. The kids don't want to be taught about it either. It's embarrassing for all parties involved. If a kiddie has questions, then by all means, give them answers. But how would you know if a kiddie has a question when you have your comments disabled, Lindsay? Turn them back on. Go on. Do it for the kids. So, to the main question. 
How do you talk to children about gayness and queerness without talking about sex? Oh, oh, I've got this one. You don't. Kids are incredibly adaptable and you may be surprised to find they don't hold many of the social stigmas that you project onto them as an adult. And they are growing up in a civilization which is accepting of homosexuality. So you may find this knowledge will come to them with stride. However, this is in the West. If you want to take your show over to Iraq, I will happily help you set up the crowdfunding. The answer is a huge part of what I do at Queer Kid Stuff and how I choose to handle these topics because you'll notice that I don't talk about sex at all. No, you not so expertly substitute it for the word love. You may think that's a clever move, but we know you're talking about sex, Lindsay. You may be used to flapping about in the kiddie pool, but now you're in the deep end and I'm not having your shit. And here's the secret. It's actually really easy. Hmm. Kids, sex, and secrets. I think we have the makings of a lawsuit. Because gayness and queerness don't actually have much to do with sex. Homosexuality. Being sexually attracted to members of the same gender. Not a direct definition because I don't want to do that to you guys, but I think we can all agree that's pretty accurate. For us grown-ups, sure. Sex can be a big part of some relationships. <laughs> None of yours, though, I'm guessing. Saying that, Teddy does look a bit fucking tattered. That bear has seen some shit, I can tell. But the importance of sex in a relationship, or not... Can you see the longing in her eyes right now? Fucking hell, Lindsay, I bet your fingertips are red raw. ...is not predicated upon whether that relationship is between two women, two men, a woman and a man, two trans or non-binary people, etc, etc. Are we getting a sex ed lesson right now? Is that what's happening? Because she must be the least qualified person to talk about this. That's why the camera's always at this angle. She doesn't even have a lower half. The question of sex within a relationship has more to do with the values within those individual relationships rather than with the gender of those involved. We already know this, Lindsay. You're talking to the grown-ups, remember? Most people are generally accepting of what happens behind closed doors, and children are wonderfully oblivious to it. So what exactly about that do you want to change? Where people most get caught up is that sex between people of two genders versus of the same gender may look different. Well, I don't know. The fundamentals are essentially the same, except scissoring, I guess. That can definitely be true, but when you're talking to kids that young, they frankly don't care that same-sex sex sex might look different because they really don't know what any kind of sex looks like in the first place. So why the fuck are you talking to them about sex, Lindsay? Especially after you said you don't, but went on to give us your first-hand experience of it just then. If you were a dude, you'd be in jail. Children understand relationships through romance. They understand love. They understand affection. This understanding is proven over and over again in every Disney movie where the prince and princess live happily ever after. Oh yeah, and as we all know, Disney films are written by kids, aren't they? So yeah, good evidence. Children understand these heterosexual love stories without understanding heterosexual sex, so why wouldn't the same be true for a homosexual relationship? Alright, fair point. But if you can make a children's film about a homosexual couple without bringing up the grown-up notion of prejudice, then you wouldn't see any point in it besides having a homosexual couple for the fucking sake of it. Never mind that a kid's basic knowledge of sex is that that's what makes babies. The prince and the princess get wed and birth a little shit. So take away the ability to reproduce without calling the kingdom's expert on IVF, and you are left with sex as a form of pleasure. And that is where most people draw the line when it comes to educating three to seven year olds. It's not homophobic to want your child to retain that sense of innocence. Think of it as the same reason we don't explain oral sex to toddlers. If Disney's core storylines can depict these romantic relationships between two people without invoking sex, then can't children understand romance between two people of the same gender? 
I'm sure they can, Lindsay. But the question is, why do you want them to? What will it achieve, considering they will be growing up in a world full of same-sex couples anyway? You can't say it'll foster more open-mindedness because most people are accepting of homosexuality without having seen such films at a young age. To the majority of people, it's not a big deal. And those who do cringe at the thought of it will not be brought around by a fucking Disney film. So besides putting homosexuality on the societal map, which it already is, what are you hoping to achieve? Now, if you're struggling with conversations with your kids about sexuality, even after watching our videos... <laughs> No, no, I I'm sure they were a great help, Lindsay. Little Timmy's just finished watching your episode on lesbians and his father asks him if he has any questions and he's like, well, now I fucking do. I have some things for you to work on. The next time you tell your tiny tot their favorite bedtime story that includes a romance. So we're not talking little boys then, are we? Because most of them aren't generally interested in romance. Or cock. Put a little gender twist on it and have the princess find her happy with another princess. I fucking knew it! I fucking knew we were talking about lezers! I fucking knew it! Change the pronouns in their storybooks. Queer the classic fairy tale. Yeah! Stick a huge dose of realism into a story about magic! That won't be fucking confusing! Talk to them about it if they have questions or think it's weird. Challenge their reaction. It's all about how you frame the positivity around the conversation. Lindsay! Fuck that! It's a fucking bedtime story! That little fucker has to go to sleep, not stay awake challenging their own perceptions! They've got a fucking spelling test tomorrow! That kid's not gonna have their head in the game at all! The fucking teacher's like, now Timmy, spell September! And he's like, LGBTQ- No Timmy! For the last time! Make up a whole new bedtime story with different gendered romances through which you can answer their questions. The news story will allow them to explore these questions around queerness in their own imaginary worlds. And I would be down with that if they had questions that are focused on homosexuality and not the fucking Power Rangers. These are kids, Lindsay. Things like having an existential crisis are left until our minds are properly formed. Another huge part about this is how you talk to your children about their futures. Their big gay futures. This aspect is probably the most difficult to execute because we're all susceptible to the language around us and how we were raised. And I'm guessing your parents were hippies. If you ever talk to your children about their possible future partners, do so with gender neutral pronouns. And this is where many people disagree with you, Lindsay. Not because they disagree with your point, but because you're telling them how to raise their fucking kids when you haven't even hit puberty yet. Do not assume that your children themselves are currently or will turn out to be either straight or cisgender. I'm sensing a bit of animosity towards your own parents there, Lindsay. Were you hugged a bit too tight, maybe? Being inclusive of queer topics in a child's learning is not enough. What? I'd say that's too fucking much, actually. Where we're teaching them 2 plus 2, you want them to know fucking quantum mechanics. Let them be kids, Lindsay, you fucking fun sponge. It is about simultaneously adopting a queer possibility into their lives as well. Talking to your kids about queerness only seems intimidating because the resources for parents of young kids are few and far between. And I'm sure you'd know, Lindsay, what with all those fucking kids you've raised from birth. You want to know why there are so few resources for teaching children about queerness? Because no one fucking wants to. They like their kids to be kids before they realise how fucking tough the world is. And we've got this far without piling that crap onto our offspring, so I'd say it's working pretty fucking well. Honestly, outside of this channel, there are just not a lot of resources for parents of young kids. I've listed a few below for you, but that's kind of it. Oh no! The younger generations will have to grow up in the same way as everyone else and survive with no psychological effects on their well-being. What a fucker! Like I said, if a youngling asks the questions, answer them. But if they don't, rest assured that they are probably thinking of their favourite cartoon character, rather than thinking how much he'd like to bum the kid who sits in front of them in class. 
Sexuality in children is not generally considered to be a thing, and so bringing about that conversation, Lindsay, might serve to raise more questions than it does answers. And remember, the queer world isn't all rainbows and jizz. It also has an underbelly of confusion, depression, hatred, and suicide. So you can hardly blame parents for wanting to shield their crotch fruit for as long as they can. And also, you currently look like a billboard for some disability charity. Thanks for watching, guys, and remember, if everyone was gay, we'd be buggered.